Good morning, everybody. This is Julie at uh, Book of Hours on my Facebook page, and um, it is about 10.10 10 in the morning on Tuesday, October 3rd, uh, 2017, here in San Francisco, California. And I wanted to show you this painting, which I have been thinking about a lot. Um, this is a painting that was done by Pablo Picasso. Um, he painted it while he was living in exile in Paris. Um, Picasso was living in Paris at the time because he was protesting um, war. And he, I believe it was self-imposed exile. Um, I'm going to head over to the Wikipedia page right now and read a little bit about it because I want to make sure that I get all of the information correct. So this painting was created in response to the bombing of Guernica, a Basque country village in northern Spain. Uh, Nazi Germany and fascist Italian warplanes had bombed Guernica at the, res at the request of the Spanish nationalists. Um, so at first, uh, Picasso was commissioned by the Spanish Republican uh, government. So Picasso's originally from Spain. That's his home. Uh, and he, so he, you know, and at the time he was a famous painter living in Paris uh, in self-imposed exile um, to protest war. And the Spanish uh, Republican government had said, would you please paint a painting for us since this is your home country? And at first he was like, sure, I will paint. It would probably was going to be something um, different. It definitely wasn't going to be an anti-war uh protest or protestation of war. It was going to be something to celebrate his home country. However, the New York Times did an article talking about the Spanish Civil War and a poet by the name of Juan Luria visited Picasso and told him about the bombing of Guernica and pleaded with him to change the subject of his painting to an anti-war protest and to show the violence of, of, uh, of war on um, this innocent little country village. So he was so moved by the article he read and he was so convinced by the poet then he went ahead and changed his the direction of his artwork. I've been thinking a lot about this because I've been thinking about scapegoats and exile and art and war <laughs> and all the things that people who tend to fall on the spectrum of an empathetic nature think about. Um... Here is a video of what's going on or what went on in Catalonia. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it there and go back to the painting because I want you to see the correlation between um, an art from an art piece from the 1930s to modern day uh, violence that's happening in Spain. So Catalonia is in Spain, like uh, 
California is in the United States. Um, Catalonia has its own language, its own culture, and the biggest city in Spain is located in Catalonia. And what the Catalonians want to do, and they were successful at it, by the way, was to secede from Spain. It would be like if California wanted to secede from the federal government from the United States and become its own independent small nation state. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So Catalonia was successful in seceding from Spain and now they that they are their own nation state. And they and within Catalonia is the largest city in Spain, Barcelona. So the commerce, the culture, the language, uh, the um, economy, the thriving economy is um, Barcelona. Well, the Spanish government uh, created, um, they um, committed violence against the people who showed up to vote for the secession or the referendum. These people were not threatening anyone. They were simply voting to not be a part of the Spanish government and to be their own nation. It would be like if the entire state of California came out and decided to uh, hold a vote of our own accord to secede from the United States government and become our own nation, the nation of California, um, which we could really do. The state of California has more money than the entire United Kingdom. Um, so it is a good possibility that, that we could do that. However, I know for a fact that Silicon Valley, and specifically San Francisco, has a lot of federal money that they use to... Um, that they put into Silicon Valley and to create all of these uh, technical, technological advances, these tech advances that ultimately are uh, made to spy on us. So it would be much too complicated for California to secede from the United States because of the fact that we are using federal money to fund uh, tech companies. So that makes it difficult. However, Catalonia does not have that kind of relationship with the Spanish government. They have been able to find economic su success all on their own. So they were successful in seceding from Spain, from Spanish control. I found when I was watching some of the videos of the violence that was committed on the Catalonians when they went in for the vote, the violence that was committed on them by the state, by the Spanish uh, police, by the state police, policia, um, I found some incredible similarities between the violence that I saw and the violence that is depicted in this mural. So this mural is actually painted on canvas and it hangs currently at the United Nations. Um, when it was originally painted, of course the Spanish government was infuriated because the government thought that Picasso was going to paint something positive towards Spain, but when it was discovered that Spain had turned on its own and bombed this innocent little village, uh, Picasso being an empath and being an artist, and because all art is political, said, no, I'm going to paint the truth. Well, then it became clear to Picasso that this painting, again, which, which, is, 
which hangs on canvas currently at the United Nations. It's huge. Um, I don't know the exact um, uh, I don't know exactly how big the tapestry is. Uh, I'm sure it says somewhere here in Wikipedia, but it hangs on the wall and it's huge. Um, I want I wanted the uh, the size. I wanted to get the size, but anyway. When the Spanish government found out that he had done this canvas and this tapestry, um, and he he did it so huge, and it was it's not something that you can ignore. It's not a small piece of of artwork that just hangs on the wall. I mean, it takes up the wall. Um, they became enraged, and Picasso felt that the the work itself would be threatened, so the work went on tour, and it remained safe in New York from 1939 until 1952. So the very idea that Picasso would place the work and the message above his own life is, I think, what is really striking me as something very incredible and something very poignant that's happening in our society today as we have more and more people come out and speak the truth about the United States' role in the continued um, threat to our globe. Um, and I just found it uplifting and moment momentous. Like I found it incredibly inspiring that he would place this piece of work, this valuable piece of artwork above his own safety. Um, so when Colin Powell gave his famous United Nations speech in support of invading Iraq in 2003 as an act of defiance against that speech, the painting, the canvas, was covered with a tarp. And the message was very clear that this invasion was a mistake. And that this canvas hangs in the United Nations as a reminder to the globalists and the imperialists and the oligarchs and the nation's leaders to remind them never to commit such horrific acts of unnecessarily unnecessary violence against innocent people ever again. And so when it was covered up, when Colin Powell gave that speech, this was a message saying, you're ignoring the truth and we know that you're ignoring the truth um, so when Picasso was in exile in Paris it was uh, occupied by the Nazis at the time so imagine the duress that one lives under and we all know this duress we all know this anxiety that's placed on us um, from the state. We're all aware of what that feels like to feel the mounting pressure. Ever since 9-11 and ever since the invasion of Iraq, not only has our constitutional protections been eroded 
all in the name of safety. But our human dignity and our human rights and the things that are not signed into legislation by a piece of paper or by a constitution, but the very things that, that are imprinted upon us as human beings have also been eroded. Um, so imagine the anxiety that Picasso must have experienced as he was painting this and creating this magnificent piece of tapestry as a sounding alarm to the world of the unrepentant violence of fascism. And how he was actually living in a repressed area. Paris was, was Nazi occupied at the time. So it's not like he was living in the Paris that we think of, which is bohemian and bourgeois and beautiful and, you know, romantic. At the time, it was under, under deep oppression. It was occupied by Nazis. And so imagine painting this while under duress. Um, and the anxiety is, uh, is palpable in this piece, in my opinion. Um, I saw, and again, I want to go back to Catalonia. I saw the similarities between this piece and the anguish that the Catalonians were experiencing as a result of unnecessarily, unnecessary violence against them when they simply decided to vote on their independence. But they won. So, while under duress, in Nazi-occupied Paris with Nazi soldiers all around him. He painted the most famous anti-war piece known to man. And it hangs in the United Nations. Or it, hung, it hung in the United Nations while Colin Powell gave the speech. And it was covered as a message to the world that we know that what you're doing is wrong. It's now back in, in uh, Picasso's home in Paris, I believe. I believe it's currently, currently there. One of the most famous recollections of this painting is that while it was in Paris, a Nazi soldier saw it, and Picasso was there, Pablo Picasso was there, and he asked Picasso, did you paint this? And Picasso's response was, no, you did. 